So these involve transition metals. Um, transition metals, um, they seem very similar to each other compared to all the main group elements. Because in the main group elements, you know, we've got some gases, we've got a bunch of nonmetals, whereas all the transition metals are metals, and they just, they seem very similar. They have moderate to high densities, they're good conductors, they have high melting points, moderate to extreme hardness, and their electron configurations are similar. They all have electrons in the d orbitals of the, of, well, the highest d level, and that's, that's why they're in that area. And yet, they're all different and have different behaviors. So if we look at moving across a row of transition elements, um, so we're, here we're talking about periods four, five, six, and seven. So the first two rows, that's uh, periods four and five, the electron configurations are going to be the previous noble gas, NS2, and minus one dx. So what does this mean? So in, um, in period four, the uh, electron configuration would be 4s2, 3d something. And so here we've got scandium, titanium, vanadium. So these are that first row of transition metals and this is how they fill up their orbitals. So we're filling the, the 4s first, and then the 3ds are filling in. You go down two rows, um, six and seven, now there's f orbitals involved. And so here we're gonna have the noble gas. Um, you might have 6s2, and this would be 4f14 and then 5D, um, whatever. There are a lot of exceptions to these electron configurations, and you do not need to know any of them. Just be aware that there are a lot of exceptions. Why? Because these energy levels are very close to each other. And so it's only a little bit of energy to move electrons around and then we've got things like half-filled orbitals are especially stable and completely filled orbitals are especially stable. And so if we look at something like chromium, we would expect chromium to have 4s2 and 3d4, and yet it doesn't. It has 4s1 and 3d5. And the logic, you know, I have to make up reasons for things Right. So what's going on here is we've got this. Um, you guys don't know about the quantum hotel for discount electrons. The disc quantum hotel, a discount resort for electrons. Um, so I, get, I try not to talk about that analogy because then I'd have to explain the whole thing. Um, so here, this sub level is is half full, and this sub level is half full. And that's um, lower in energy. And so that makes up for this electron um, moving up to a slightly higher energy orbital. We see a similar thing happen with copper. Um, here, we would expect it to be 4s2, and yet it's 4s1 and it's 3d10. Because in doing that, now we have a, a half-filled sublevel and a completely filled sublevel. Whereas before, we would have had one completely filled sublevel and then just this like nine out of 10. And so, you know, the symmetry is, is a bonus here. When the transition metals become ions, they lose their valence electrons first. This 4s level is the valence shell. Valence electrons are the highest occupied energy level anything with the highest principal energy level. So even though the 4s electrons were not the last added, those are the first ones that are lost. And you learned that in Chem 1A. I completely understand if you forgot about that. Any questions so far? Uh, 
Um, so this is just a, a periodic table I pulled in from Chem 1A. And this is showing us these electron configurations, right? So here we've got 5s2, and we're adding it to the, the four Ds. Um, here, uh, we start out in the 5D, but then we get into these guys, the lanthanides, and those are filling up the F, and then we come back and finish filling up the 5D. Okay? But for all of these, the valence electrons are those two S electrons. So we should be able to do things like this. Again, this is not going to be on an exam where you have to get all of this out of your brain, right? So write the ground state electron configuration for OS, osmium. Can you just apply one test too? Well, it's a take home test, so you can do whatever you want. I mean, ask your other group members. Yeah. I don't advise asking Chad. Yeah, there's a lot of false information on Chad. Okay, so osmium, we're going to go to the previous noble gas, which is xenon. So we're going to have the electron configuration of xenon plus. So osmium is in period six. So we're going to start over there on the left side, and we've got six S, and we'll fill, fill up the two. And then um, we've got lanthanum through lutricium. I think it's lutricium, um, 57 through 71. And so that is, that's not 5F, that's 4F. So we're going to go and fill up the 4F, 14, and then we're going to come back and fill in the 5D. And so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can always double check um, by adding these together. Um, 14 and 6 is 20, plus 2 is 22, and xenon is 76, and osmium is 76. So we've got the right number of electrons. Any questions? Let's look at the ground state electron configuration for NB2+. Anytime you're writing electron configurations for cations, um, well, actually for anions too, write the atom first and then deal with the charge. So first we're going to do just NB, niobium. Where'd you go? There he is. Um, period 5 is number 41. So period 5 would be krypton. And then we've got 5s2 and 4d, one, one, two, three, right? Yeah. So that's NB. NB2 plus, what electrons are going to be lost? The 5s. We're going to lose the valence electrons, which are the ones with the largest number here. 5 is bigger than 4. Yes, the D ones got filled in afterwards. It doesn't matter. We're, we're taking out these 5s. So this is a 2 plus charge. We need to remove two electrons. And so we'll just take those guys out. And that would be niobium 2 ion. Any questions? So this ion has electrons in the d orbitals, right? And this crystal field idea is that the crystal field causes the energy of those d orbitals to split so that they're not all exactly the same like normally they are. So we're looking at properties of transition elements. When we look at atomic size, um, 
when we go across a row, normally on the periodic table going across a row, the atoms get smaller as you go to the right. For the uh, transition metals, there's a difference in the first two columns, the first two elements, they're going to get smaller. And then after that, they're kind of just the same. There's not a real trend. They're all just kind of the same. The reason here is that the number of electrons in the outermost principal energy level is nearly constant. And um, it's mostly it's two with an occasional one. Um, and so the effective nuclear charge is going to also be roughly constant. Because as we're putting those D electrons in, those are not valence electrons. And so they are core electrons. You add a core electron, it doesn't affect the nuclear charge. So they're approximately the same. Going down a group, um, we see that the second row is larger. So here is the first row, and the second row in red is larger than the first row, but the third row, pretty much the same as the second row. No, deep, no size increase for the third row. And this is because those F electrons that that third row of transition elements has, they don't shield the um, outer electrons effectively. So we don't see that usual trend where we've got shielding of the core electrons. That's known as the lampanide contraction. So the lampanides are smaller than you would expect. Again, you're not going to be quizzed on comparing these sizes. Because they're just not easy to compare. Ionization energy, we learned that ionization energy increases across a row for the uh, main group elements. Because as you go across, the atoms get smaller. And so it becomes harder to remove electrons. So here, there is a trend like that. As we go across, the ionization energy increases. Um, but it's not as, as steep of an increase as it is for the main group elements. And as we're going down a group, we would expect the ionization energy to get smaller as the atoms are getting larger. But here, we have actually the opposite trend. So let's look at these guys over here. Or, well, this, this, these guys happen to be in the correct order. So the first row, the second row, the third row, as we're going down, the ionization energy is increasing. That's not what we learned about the main group elements. And the reason for this is that the charge of the nucleus is substantially higher, but the atom is actually smaller. And so those outer electrons are going to be harder to remove. Electronegativity, going across, we see an increase in electronegativity, which is what we would expect. What I remember about um, electronegativity is fluorine is the most electronegative. And so going across or going up, going towards fluorine, the trend is more electronegative. Here again, going down a group, um, we get an increase in electronegativity from the first row to the second row and no change for the third row. That's not what the other elements do. Again, we've got relatively small size changes and big changes in nuclear charge. Um, gold is actually the most electronegative metal, has an electronegativity of 2.4, and uh, gold compounds containing a gold anion have actually been observed. Oxidation states, so the transition metals are, are the ones that, for the most part, need the Roman numerals because they can make lots of different ions. Um, manganese just really goes nuts here. So here's manganese. Manganese can be plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, or plus 7. Any of those guys, right? Um, for the metals to the left of manganese, the highest oxidation state gives you a noble gas electron configuration, which is something that we observed with nonmetals makes them especially stable. Um, ones to the right tend to have lower oxidation states. Um, the plus two is really common here. 
because the plus two represents losing those two S electrons. 